Sky Patrol, and today we're going to go over the basics of installing a Sky Patrol vehicle tracking system in a typical 12 volt car or light truck. First, make sure you have the tools and supplies that you need for the vehicle that you're working on. Second, find a secure location to mount the Sky Patrol transponder. Third, connect the wiring harnesses, three wires, to the vehicle's electrical system. And fourth, find a good location to mount the antennas and connect them to the transponder. Here's the tools you're typically going to need. A multimeter to make sure that you have enough power at the point where you want to connect the Sky Patrol unit. An assortment of screwdrivers and wrenches for all the obvious reasons. Some plastic cable ties to bundle the wires neatly or possibly to secure the Sky Patrol unit to its mounting location. Some crimp-on electrical connectors or fuse taps. And a crimping tool. Or if you plan on splicing into your vehicle's wires, you're going to need wire cutters, a soldering gun, solder, and some electrical tape. The first thing you need to do is check the Sky Patrol box and identify its contents. This small black box is the main part of the system and it contains the GPS receiver and the outbound cellular modem for communicating with the Sky Patrol Operations Center. It needs to be installed in the passenger compartment or some other place where it is protected from the weather. Next we have the wiring harness with an attached connector that is used to connect the Sky Patrol unit to your vehicle's electrical system. You'll notice that the wiring harness has two cables attached to it. One cable contains the three wires, black, white, and red, that are used to power the Sky Patrol transponder. The other cable contains the wires for optional alarm inputs and a control output. Since we're not hooking up any alarms on this install, I'm just going to leave the alarm cable bundled up close to the control unit. Now you need to decide where you're going to get your power from and where you want to mount the transponder because the length of the wiring harness may narrow down your options. Of course, if really needed, you could splice additional lengths of wire to the wiring harness to make it longer. For this install, rather than splicing and soldering into the vehicle's wiring harness, I'm going to get my power from the fuse block by using these handy fuse taps and then mount the control unit somewhere under the dashboard. These fuse taps are really neat and simple to use, and unlike crimp-on connectors, you don't run the risk of faulty connections or damaging the wire you're connecting to. First, crimp the end of the red wire from the wiring harness into the power lead from the fuse tap. Then, use your multimeter to find a fuse that is always hot. Pull the fuse taps out of the fuse block, insert the fuse tap in its place, place the original fuse you removed from the fuse block in the fuse tap to restore power to the truck circuits, and then place another fuse in the second position on the fuse tap to provide power to the Sky Patrol unit. Repeat the process with the white wire, only this time use your multimeter to find a circuit that is hot only when the ignition switch is on. For this vehicle, I'm using the radio circuit since it is activated by the ignition switch. This white ignition sensing wire is important to the operation of the Sky Patrol transponder. It lets the system know if the ignition is on or off, which is critical information used for many of the reports the customer will come to depend on. It also serves another critical function. Every time the ignition switch is turned on, it causes the Sky Patrol transponder to reboot itself, which causes it to reset and forces a self-test of its circuits. If you don't connect the white wire to a circuit controlled by the ignition switch, or if you simply tie the red and white wire together and connect them to an always hot circuit, you will disable many of the reporting functions, and over a period of time, the transponder could stop working if the unit doesn't have the ability to occasionally reboot and test itself. And last but not least, you'll need to find a good solid connection to the grounded truck body for the black wire. There are two things to remember when choosing your circuits to connect to. First, do not connect to any safety or emergency circuit, such as the airbag trigger. And second, make sure that the circuit you are tapping into has sufficient current capacity to handle the small additional current draw of Sky Patrol, which is one quarter of an amp or less. I'm going to mount the Sky Patrol transponder unit underneath this dashboard but you may decide on another location, such as in a glove box, in a center console, or even in the trunk of a car. Any dry protected place is fine as long as you have access to constant power, ignition switched power, good grounding opportunities, and a place to mount the antennas so that they can see outside of the vehicle. The GPS antenna is a directional type of antenna that is designed to amplify signals that are coming at it from roughly directly above and down towards the horizon. After all, that's where the satellites are. The domed portion of the antenna should be installed facing towards the sky 
with the flat base of the antenna pointing towards the ground. Keep in mind that the goal is to place the antenna so that it has a view of the outside world. The same holds true for the cellular modem antenna. In this sense, the antenna can see through most kinds of plastics and glass, but not through solid metal. Here's an easy guideline to remember. If the material is a good conductor of electricity, like steel, it will probably block the satellite signal. If it's not a good electrical conductor, like glass or plastic, then the satellite signal will probably get through it. Thankfully, most dashboards are made out of plastic these days. Of course, if the customer has no objections, you can always simply mount the antennas on top of the dashboard, just inside of the windshield. In this case, we're going to install the antennas out of sight, inside of the dashboard. Now, you may have to crawl underneath the dashboard, or you may have an access panel like this truck has. Okay, we've got power, we've mounted the antennas, and we've decided where to mount the Sky Patrol control unit. All that's left is to make the final connections. Now, first we're going to connect the antenna leads. It doesn't matter which lead you connect first. Each lead has a different connector, so you can't make a mistake. Now all we have to do is plug in the power cord. To perform the initial testing of the unit, your vehicle should be outdoors in the open where the GPS signal is readily available. After powering up the device, observe the three LEDs to ensure that they are all on and glowing. It may take as much as 10 minutes for all the LEDs to come on and stay on the first time you power up the unit. Don't worry, this is normal. When you power up for the first time, you should leave the vehicle in the open for at least 20 minutes. This will ensure that the unit receives all of the initial information it needs to do its job. You don't need to leave the ignition on during this initial startup period. Sky Patrol is constantly listening, even when the engine is off. From now on, each time you turn the ignition key on, the Sky Patrol unit will perform an automatic reset and self-test. You can observe this by watching the LEDs each turn off and then cycle back on. This reset normally takes about 12 seconds to perform. The three LED lights on the front of the unit will help you to troubleshoot any connection problems. The green light on the right side of the unit is the power indicator. The red LED closest to the green power LED lets you know if the unit is connected to the cellular data system, and the red LED to the far left lets you know if the unit is connected to the GPS satellite system. Under normal circumstances, all three lights should be on and not flashing. Flashing LEDs indicate that a particular system is attempting to make a connection or is resetting itself. A continuously unlit LED indicates that there is a problem with one of the systems. If the green light is not lit, check the connections of the red and white wires and of the black ground wire. If either of the two red lights is unlit, you may need to relocate the affected antenna to a different location so it gets a better signal. Now that we've connected the power and antennas, and we've verified that the Sky Patrol transponder is working properly, let's complete the job by hard mounting the transponder. I'm going to simply secure the unit under the dashboard using these plastic cable ties to attach the unit to some bracing. It's important to double check everything to make sure that the unit is secure and that the wires are out of the way and that nothing will shake loose and interfere with the safe operation of the vehicle. As a final test, you should log on to the Sky Patrol tracking website and verify that the unit is communicating with Sky Patrol Operations Center. If the system fails to find the vehicle, you should first check the placement of the antennas to be sure that they are not being blocked by metal or other obstructions. That's all there is to it. Three simple connections. The red wire to an always hot power source, the white wire to a power source controlled by the ignition switch, and the black wire to the ground. Secure the antennas in a place that allows them to see out of the vehicle and plug them into the control unit. Mount the control unit in a safe and secure location and you're done. For more detailed information on installing or troubleshooting Sky Patrol, visit us on the web at www.skypatrol.com.